Hi, I'm Tim Moen, leader of the Libertarian Party of Canada. I want to tell you why I support Brian Jean. As a firefighter paramedic for many years in Fort McMurray, uh, Brian was a regular fixture around the fire hall. You could see him regularly laughing and joking with the fellas, raising morale. Uh, he would hear our concerns and he would speak and attend regularly um, our events. You know, we would have line of duty deaths and, and funerals or, or fallen firefighter memorials. And he would be there uh, to offer us encouragement, words of support. And so I always liked Brian on a personal level. I thought he was he was a caring, uh, warm guy. And you got the sense that he was very authentic. But, you know, on the political level, as a libertarian, I'm most concerned about the growth and intrusion of government into our economic and our, our private personal lives. And so when Brian came out in his first public interview as newly minted leader of the Wild Rose Party, and he said that he's not interested in not only getting government out of my wallet, but also out of my home and personal life, I was pleasantly surprised. Because remember at that time, uh, principled conservatism looked like it was dead in Alberta. You know, the PC government had grown out of control after decades in power. Uh, it certainly didn't look like any kind of restrained conservative government. You know, the PCs were largely reviled by Albertans because of what looked like a corrupt leadership that was um, living high on the hog off the, the backs of hardworking Albertans. The Wild Rose was in shambles and, and looked like it was DOA uh, because of the Daniel Smith floor crossing. And here we had a rising star on the left, Rachel Notley, uh, who was poised to sweep the province completely unopposed. Things looked pretty bleak. But luckily for Albertans, Brian Jean appeared on the scene. He reorganized, re-energized and, and rallied the Wild Rose Party. And they went on to win a bunch of seats and give Albertans a strong conservative voice of opposition in the legislature. And I shudder to think what might have happened had a capable leader like Brian not appeared on the scene in that moment. You know, and I remember when Brian was running in the election, um, and, and I asked him, I said, why are you choosing to run in the riding that's the hardest to win, that is has the most difficult incumbent to beat I mean why don't you just pick the easy riding why, why don't you get the guaranteed seat and you, you could run virtually unopposed and he told me Tim I want a clear message from the people that they want me to represent them and if I don't get that clear message then I don't deserve or want this job that always impressed the heck out of me and I saw the same commitment to giving voters a choice when he chose to embark on unification under a new conservative party. Uh, I believe he could have held on to his position as Wild Rose leader, kept building on his success and momentum. And, and I think the Wild Rose party could have formed government and he could have been leader um, in the next election. I think that was a real possibility. And in fact, a likelihood had he chosen that route. Instead, he put the wishes of Albertans ahead of his own ambitions and put himself in a race for leadership with other capable candidates. As if to say, I want to unite. It's more important that conservatives win than I win. It's more important that Albertans win than I win. And I think that says a lot about his character. But, you know, the biggest thing that draws me to Brian is the fact that he, more than most people, has felt the pain and loss of a system that doesn't adequately serve Albertans. And I'm not just talking about the, you know, the economic devastation and, and the flight of capital um, that we see across Albertan and, and sp particularly in his home region uh, of Fort McMurray and the oil sands, you know, thanks to, to low oil prices and terrible NDP policies. I mean, the, the economic situation is one thing. We all feel that. And, and I know Fort McMurray really feels it. But I'm talking about the real personal pain, frustration, anger, sadness I saw in Brian as he was dealing with, with his getting his dying son treatment. I, I saw this man move heaven and earth uh, trying to, 
to get that boy the care he needed, the, the care that, that wasn't available in Alberta, the most, one of the most rich, resource-rich provinces or jurisdictions probably in the world. You know, I saw him lose his family home to add insult to injury from the, the, the Fort McMurray wildfires, which hurt so many people. I saw him bring his tent to the front lines, stand shoulder to shoulder with the people up there working on the ground and trying to raise morale, trying to connect people to resources they desperately needed, trying to remove any barriers and red tape that stood in their way and raise and be a voice for them. And at the end of the day, uh, to me, I don't care how polished a candidate is. I don't care um, much if they've ever put their foot in their mouth or made a misstep step. Obviously, I want a candidate that has a political philosophy that lines up with mine. But more than that, I want a candidate who has deeply and personally felt the pain of a system that is failing Albertans, that shares the pain that I felt in my family that other Albertans have felt. Because that guy, that's one of us, is motivated to fix the, the system like no other. I want a candidate who puts Albertans ahead of their own personal ambitions. I want a guy who has given Albertans a voice when they had no voice. I want a candidate that has a, a proven track record of leadership. That's the person I would like leading this province. That's why I'm supporting Brian Jean.